Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in a video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Tanga, otherwise known as the Battle of the Bees, located in Tanga, German East Africa and involving the elements of India and the German East Africa on November 3rd through November 5th, 1914. The small German East Africa port of Tanga was located only 50 miles away from British East Africa. All this is near current day Kenya. Tanga had been repeatedly bombarded by the British fleet, but they had left it alone with the British army for most of 1914. The British wished to perform an amphibious landing on Tanga, but like many plans, the idea of the invasion and the colossal mix-ups of reality contradicted each other as the British cruiser HMS Fox arrived on November 2nd under the command of Captain Francis Wade Caulfield. Feeling either very brave or very much full of hubris, he landed on Tanga himself and gave them one hour to surrender to him by lowering the German imperial flag and to put themselves under British rule. While he was there, he demanded of the German East Africa government to know if the harbor itself was mined. In the end, he was not given an answer to either. As he realized they're not responding three hours later, he angrily sailed back to his convoy and decided to land on the beaches with his 14 troop transports. Captain Caulfield did not realize that going back and prepping his fleet would give the German East African government time to evacuate the civilians and the German troops the ability to prepare their defenses. The German Schutztroop commander, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Emil von Leto Vorbeck, arrived in Tanga with his troops to help prepare the defenses along with a single company of local Ascaris troops. Within a short time, Captain Vorbeck had more than 1,000 troops and had promoted former German East Africa Company Captain Tom von Prince to his second in command. Back on the British fleet, Captain Caulfield cautiously swept the harbor for mines on both November 2nd and most of November 3rd, giving Colonel Vorbeck more time. While this was happening, Force Commander General of the British Indian Expeditionary Force B, General Aitken, took the infantry and began an unopposed landing of his troops about three miles east of the city. By the end of November 3rd, the troops had fully landed and were prepared except for the 27th Mountain Battery and the Ferd Cot Sappers. By noon November 4th, Aitken ordered his troops to take the city, but they were stopped outside by well-placed German East African defenders. The initial push into the city became a skirmish inside the palm oil and coconut plantations, which resulted in harsh street fighting. The Indian Gurkhas of the Kashmiri Rifles and the 2nd Loyal North Lancashire Regiment were the only British units to make good progress in secure parts of the town. The remaining British units comprised of the 27th Bangalore Brigade and the 98th Infantry were unexpectedly stopped by local bees attacking them and the German defenders. The British later would use the bees as propaganda to insinuate the Germans had intentionally used the bees as cruel weapons, which was not the case in fact. They just had disturbed several local beehives. While this happened, German colonial volunteers comprising the 7th and 8th rifle companies arrived by rail and immediately melted in with the German defensive line. Realizing he may need the rest of his troops, German Captain Vorbeck ordered the last of his troops in reserve, the 13th and 4th Ascari Field Companies, to attack the British from the rear and to envelope them with bayonet attack. The Ascari used bugles and tribal war cries as they leapt into the fight, forcing the British troops back. Even with the three British battalions retreating from these attacking Ascari, the English outnumbered the Germans 8 to 1. Miscommunication between various German commanders resulted in the Ascari pulling back and Captain Vorbeck having to order him back out. All this was unbeknownst to Eichen and the British that Tang itself was mostly empty defenders who had mistakenly retreated back. Finally, Eichen ordered angrily a retreat. His 9,000 men had clearly been defeated by the defender's paltry 1,000 men. It galled him to have a 9 to 1 advantage and still not win. The Germans suffered approximately 148 casualties, consisting of 55 Ascaris killed, 16 Germans killed, and 76 German and Ascaris combined wounded. Meanwhile, the British had 995 casualties, consisting of 360 killed, 487 wounded, and 148 men missing. The Germans viewed this battle as a great success. Captain Leto Vorbeck was able to resupply his men with modern British equipment and over half a million rounds of ammunition. He had gained 16 machine guns, field telephones, and clothing to outfit his troops. This was the first of what would be many successes for Captain Paul Leto Vorbeck, 
in his German East Africa campaign. The British government, however, considered this defeat a disaster, and it was recorded in the British official history of the war, one of the most notable failures of British military history. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.